Traditionalist theology is a Islamic scholarly movement, originating in the late 8th century CE, who reject rationalistic Islamic theology in favor of strict textualism in interpreting the Quran and Hadith. The name derives from tradition in its technical sense as translation of the Arabic word Hadith. It is also sometimes referred to by several other names. Adherents of traditionalist theology believe the zahir literal, apparent meaning of the Quran and the Hadith are the sole authorities in matters of belief and law, and that the use of rational disputation is forbidden even verifying the truth. They engage in a literal reading of the Quran, as opposed to one engaged in tawil metaphorical interpretation. They do not attempt to conceptualize the meanings of the Quran rationally, and believe that their realities should be consigned to God alone tafwid. In essence, the text of the Quran and Hadith is accepted without asking, how, or, by la kaifa. Traditionalist theology emerged among Hadith scholars who eventually coalesced into a movement called Al Al Hadith under the leadership of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. B. 780 d. 855. In matters of faith, they were pitted against Mutazilites and other theological currents, condemning many points of their doctrine as well as the rationalistic methods they used in defending them. In the 10th century Al-Ash'ari and Al-Maturidi found a middle ground between Mutazilite rationalism and Hanbalite literalism, using the rationalistic methods championed by Mutazilites to defend most tenets of the traditionalist doctrine. Although the mainly Hanbali scholars who rejected this synthesis were in the minority, their emotive, narrative-based approach to faith remained influential among the urban masses in some areas, particularly in Abbasid Baghdad, while Asherism and Maturidism are often called the Sunni orthodoxy. Traditionalist theology has thrived alongside it, laying rival claims to be the orthodox Sunni faith. In the modern era it has had a disproportionate impact on Islamic theology, having been appropriated by Wahhabi and other traditionalist Salafi currents and spread well beyond the confines of the Hanbali school of law. Topic. Terminology Several terms are used to refer to traditionalist theology. They are used inconsistently and some of them have been subject to criticism. The term traditionalist theology is derived from the word tradition in its technical meaning as translation of the Arabic term hadith. This term is found in a number of reference works. It has been criticized by Marshall Hodgson who preferred the term hadith folk for its potential for confusion between the technical and common meanings of the word tradition. Oliver Lehman also cautions against misinterpreting the terms traditionalists and rationalists as implying that the former favored irrationality or that the latter did not use hadith. Some authors reject the use of these terms as labels for groups of scholars and prefer to speak of traditionalist and rationalist tendencies instead. Racha El Omari has used traditionalist theology. In a way that includes Asherism and Maturitism, the term traditionism has also been used in the same sense, although Benjamin Abrahamov reserves the term traditionists for scholars of Hadith, distinguishing it from traditionalism as a theological current, since the overwhelming majority of the Hanbali school of jurisprudence has adhered to traditionalist theology, some sources refer to it as Hanbali theology. However, others note that some Shafi'i scholars also belong to this theological movement, while some Hanbalites adopted a more rationalist theology, Athari from the Arabic word Athar, meaning remnant, or narrative, is another term that has been used for traditionalist theology. The term Al-Al-Hadith people of Hadith theology is used by some authors in the same sense as Athari, while others restrict it to the early stages of this movement, or use it in a broader sense to denote particular enthusiasm towards Hadith. Some authors refer to traditionalist theology as classical Salafism or classic Salafia from Salaf, meaning pious ancestors. Henri Lozier has argued that, while the majority Hanbali creed was sometimes identified as Salafi in classical era sources, using the corresponding nouns in this context is anachronistic. History 
Traditionalist theology emerged toward the end of the 8th century CE among scholars of Hadith who held the Quran and authentic Hadith to be the only acceptable sources of law and creed. At first these scholars formed minorities within existing religious study circles, but by the early 9th century they coalesced into a separate traditionalist movement commonly called Al-Hadith under the leadership of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. In legal matters, these traditionalists criticized the use of personal opinion rai common among the Hanafi jurists of Iraq as well as the reliance on living local traditions by Malachite jurists of Medina. They also rejected the use of kiyas analogical deduction and other methods of jurisprudence not based on literal reading of scripture. In matters of faith, traditionalists were pitted against Mutazilites and other theological currents, condemning many points of their doctrines as well as the rationalistic methods they used in defending them. Traditionalists were also characterized by their avoidance of all state patronage and by their social activism. They attempted to follow the injunction of commanding good and forbidding evil by preaching asceticism and launching vigilante attacks to break wine bottles, musical instruments, and chessboards. In 833 the Caliph al-Mamun tried to impose Mutazilite theology on all religious scholars and instituted an inquisition which required them to accept the Mutazilite doctrine that the Quran was a created object, which implicitly made it subject to interpretation by Caliphs and scholars. Ibn Hanbal led traditionalist resistance to this policy, affirming under torture that the Quran was uncreated and hence co-eternal with God. Although Mutazilism remained state doctrine until 851, the efforts to impose it only served to politicize and harden the theological controversy. The next two centuries saw an emergence of broad compromises in both law and creed within Sunni Islam. In jurisprudence, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, and Hanbali madhabs all gradually came to accept both the traditionalist reliance on the Quran and Hadith and the use of controlled reasoning in the form of qiyas. In theology, Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari found a middle ground between Mutazilite rationalism and Hanbalite literalism, using the rationalistic methods championed by Mutazilites to defend most tenets of the traditionalist doctrine. A rival compromise between rationalism and traditionalism emerged from the work of al-Maturidi d. c. 944, and one of these two schools of theology was accepted by members of all Sunni madhabs, with the exception of most Hanbalite and some Shafi'i scholars, who ostensibly persisted in their rejection of Kalam, although they often resorted to rationalistic arguments themselves, even while claiming to rely on the literal text of scripture. Although the scholars who rejected the Ash'ari, Maturidi synthesis were in the minority, their emotive, narrative-based approach to faith remained influential among the urban masses in some areas, particularly particularly in Baghdad. Its popularity manifested itself repeatedly from late 9th to 11th centuries, when crowds shouted down preachers who publicly expounded rationalistic theology. After Caliph al-Mutawakkil suspended the rationalist inquisition, Abbasid Caliphs came to rely on an alliance with traditionalists to buttress popular support. In the early 11th century the Caliph al-Qadir made a series of proclamations that sought to prevent public preaching of rationalistic theology. In turn, the Seljuk vizier Nizam al-Mulk in the late 11th century encouraged Ash'ari theologians in order to counterbalance caliphal traditionalism, inviting a number of them to preach in Baghdad over the years. One such occasion led to five months of rioting in the city in 1077, while Ash'arism and Maturidism are often called the Sunni orthodoxy. Traditionalist theology has thrived alongside it, laying rival claims to be the orthodox Sunni faith. In the modern era it has had a disproportionate impact on Islamic theology, having been appropriated by Wahhabi and other traditionalist Salafi currents and spread well beyond the confines of the Hanbali school of law. <laughs> <laughs> Beliefs <laughs> On the Quran The Atharis believe that every part of the Quran is uncreated It is reported that Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, The Quran is God's speech, which he expressed, it is uncreated. He who claims the opposite is a Jamite, an infidel. And he who says, the Quran is God's speech, and stops there without adding, uncreated, speaks even more abominably than the former.
Topic: On Kalam and Human Reason. For Atharis, the validity of human reason is severely limited, and rational proofs cannot be trusted nor relied upon in matters of belief, thus making Kalam a blameworthy innovation. Rational proofs, unless they are Quranic in origin, are considered non-existent and wholly invalid. However, this was not always the case as a number of Atharis delved into Kalam, whether or not they described it as such. Examples of Atharis who wrote books against the use of Kalam and human reason include the Hanbali Sufi, Khwaja Abdullah Ansari, and the Hanbali jurist Ibn Qudama. Ibn Qudama harshly rebuked theology as one of the worst of all heresies. He characterized its partisans, its theologians, as innovators and heretics who had betrayed and deviated from the simple and pious faith of the early Muslims. He writes, The theologians are intensely hated in this world, and they will be tortured in the next. None among them will prosper, nor will he succeed in following the right direction. Topic. On the attributes of God The Atharis staunchly affirm the existence of the attributes of God and consider all of them to be equally eternal. They accept the relevant verses of the Quran and Hadith as they are, without subjecting them to rational analysis or elaboration. According to Atharis, the real meanings of the attributes of God should be consigned to God alone tafwid. According to this method, one should adhere to the sacred text of the Quran and believe that it is the truth, without trying to explain it through figurative explanation. Ahmed ibn Hanbal reportedly stated, His attributes proceed from him and are his own. We do not go beyond the Quran and the traditions of the Prophet and his companions, nor do we know the how of these, save by the acknowledgement of the Apostle and the confirmation of the Quran. Ibn Qudama al Makdisi stated, for we have no need to know the meaning which Allah intended by his attributes, no course of action is intended by them, nor is there any obligation attached to them. It is possible to believe in them without the knowledge of their intended sense. Anthropomorphism was commonly alleged against Athari scholars by their critics, including the Hanbalite scholar and theologian Ibn al-Jazi. In some cases, Athari scholars espoused extreme anthropomorphic views, but they do not generally represent the Athari movement as a whole. Topic. On Iman faith. The Atharis hold that Iman faith increases and decreases in correlation with the performance of prescribed rituals and duties, such as the five daily prayers. They believe that Iman resides in the heart, in the utterance of the tongue and in the action of the limbs. Topic. On division of Tawhid Some scholars of the Athari school of divinity supported the division of Tawhid into three categories, Tawhid al-Rububiya, the oneness of lordship referring to belief in God as the creator and sustainer of the world and Tawhid al ulahiya the oneness of divinity, referring to worshipping God as the only deity and Tawhid al-asma wa l-sifat, the oneness of names and attributes, which asserts that God has only one set of attributes and they do not contradict each other. Ibn Taymiyyah seems to have been the first to introduce this distinction. Topic. Criticism 16th century Sunni scholar Ibn Hajar al Haytami denounced Athari views associated with Ibn Taymiyyah. The dogmatic and anti rationalistic positions of traditionalist theology was also related to the source on which Islamism thoughts are based on. 